Hi everyone, we are live. It is eight o'clock on a Friday night. Somebody said, oh, I can't wait for the weekend. And I thought to myself, I don't know how the weekend feels much different when you're inside all the time. <laughs> so, but nonetheless, we'll at least get to sleep in. I won't have to wake up at 3.30 a.m. to voice my report for the morning news and wanted to wake up at 6.30 to go live for the morning news. So it will be nice. So welcome into all of you. Let me see where I put my phone, because when I'm without my phone, I feel like I'm naked. Welcome in, welcome in. We will get started shortly. Good evening. How are you doing, David? I'm well. What is your name? I'm Hector. Hi, Hector. Where are you in the world? I'm in Houston, Texas, from, but I'm from Puerto Rico. Okay. Tell us about your new normal in Houston, Texas. So I got, actually, today was, uh, I got tested today for COVID. Oh, um, did you Did you really? Yeah, kind of interesting. I work, uh, I'm a healthcare professional. I work with a, a medical device company, and um, one of the physicians that work in the cath lab tested positive, so basically they sent everybody home. Um, that was last Thursday, last Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday, not this week, the week before. I uh, tried to get tested right away, but since I wasn't presenting any symptoms, they say that I could not do it. I, I fill out an application that Friday. Uh, didn't hear from nobody until Monday. Fill out another screening application that Monday. Didn't hear nothing until today where I finally got in touch with an MP who did the screening. I still have no symptoms. Told him, look, I, I really don't think I need to get tested. But he told me, well, since you're in the healthcare system and you go visit different hospitals, you definitely should get tested. So I went through the whole process today and uh, it's going to take at least another three to six days to get results. So, because I think they're going through the CDC. And Hector, what do you do in the healthcare industry? So I'm a device representative. I work with pacemakers, defibrillators. Uh, so I'm in the cath lab assisting the physician. Plus on top of that, I have to go to do the um, follow up on patients, uh, either in the doctor's office or in the hospital. So because you were tested and because you were exposed to someone mm -hmm. who tested positive, are you self-isolating for yes. 14 days? Yes. Yeah, so basically, since I found out last Wednesday night, I talked to my company because I work for a company. I don't work for the hospitals. I service the hospitals. I work with, uh, with my manager, HR department, and basically the decision was that I should just uh, stay home and kind of observe if for any symptoms and uh, take it from there. Obviously, the first thing that they asked me was try to get tested. That way we, you know, kind of get to know what was the uh, verdict. But yeah, basically I've stayed home this whole week trying to stay as far away. Thankfully, I haven't felt any symptoms. You know, I think more of the paranoia of feeling some of the symptoms, even though you might be okay. But I think everybody through the stress and, you know, have felt some of the symptoms like shortening of breath. And there's a lot of pollen this season too. So if you go out at least to grab some fresh air and there's pollen, you're going to feel some uh, post-nasal drip and allergies. And some sometimes you can get those confused as well if you're coughing and all that. So, But uh, all good for now. I mean, it was interesting. I was kind of calculating since the day I was exposed because I do remember seeing the physician and I do remember having lunch with the staff in the lunch area of the hospital. And since that day until today that I got tested, it's been three and a half weeks. So, I mean, 
it's, it's being, a, a, and, and that's the interesting part of this, that let's say 10 days later after getting exposed, I was already transmitting the virus. If I didn't take the safety precautions, I would be spreading that in other hospitals because I go at least to four or five hospitals a day. So uh, I think the smart thing to do was to just stay home and, uh, you know, be safe. Good advice from Hector from Houston. Thank you, Hector, for weighing in. And um, yeah. look, I hope, I hope the test results are negative. But like you said, because it was so long ago, you could have had it and already shed mm -hmm. the virus and be done with it. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Stay safe. I know you're in New York, right? I am. All right. Stay safe. I am. Thank you, Hector. Good night. No Bye. I think Hector is the first person we've heard from in our town halls who has tested positive. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he's the first... I'm sorry, tested positive. The first person to actually take a test. I think he's the first one that we've heard from who's done that, so. And more and more that's gonna happen is more tests are available. Hi, David, how are you? Hello, I'm good, what is your name? Katiana Hernandez. Where are you in the world? In Miami, but I'm from the Isla del Encanto, Puerto Rico. Okay, yes. nice <laughs> to meet you. What did you want to tell us? What's your new normal? So first, I want to thank you for allowing me to speak about mental health and the crisis that we are going through as a society. And I wanted to say to my Puerto Rico people that I'm here to help you out. And if you need help or you are going through something difficult right now, I'm here to help you out. So uh, with this being said, I am offering free counseling and free psychological evaluations. People from Puerto Rico have been pre are predisposed to anxiety, depression, first Vilma, then Maria, the earthquakes, and now this. We were not prepared for this, and the lack of mental health services in the island is it's too big something that that makes me emotional because i know being from puerto rico i know how difficult it is to get mental health services so my message is that if you need mental health services if you are feeling depressed if you're feeling anxious if you just need someone to talk to please know that i'm here to help and david can i please say this message in spanish so my people can understand sure if, please do but also let them know you're not just coming from a good heart you are medically trained so let, yes. let everybody let everybody know that you are properly trained for this yes Go ahead. yes Go ahead. so i'm a master's level psychologist i am licensed to practice in the state of florida and i am pursuing my doctorate degree so I have a very good training in psychology and I have helped so many people from Puerto Rico. And honestly, my good heart is, is not because I am a good person. It's because I love Puerto Rico and I know the big necessity that they have in the mental health field. So I'm medical trained. I, am, I have my license to practice and I'm here to help. Please say it in Spanish. I would love to listen. Yes. So, a todas mis personas de Puerto Rico que están escuchando este mensaje, quiero que sepan que si estás pasando por una depresión, por una ansiedad, o solo necesitas a una persona que te escuche, que te ayude, por favor, contáctame. Los pasos son muy, muy sencillos. Me mandas un mensaje, send me a message, y todo va a ser confidencial, es HIPAA compliance, y se va a quedar entre nosotros. Y lo más importante, the good news is that this is free of charge. Es totalmente gratis. So, por favor, me dejan saber. And thank you, David. Honestly, you're like the Puerto Rican God. <laughs> oh, listen, I'm, I'm definitely not a God, but uh, I love you guys, <laughs> and I want to do everything I can to help every way I can. So anyway, that's all. It's very simple. And, and I am um, really happy you came on tonight. And I hope someone takes you up on it. Let, let us do this. So for everyone yes. watching, let me give you her Instagram handle. You can reach out to her that way and send a message. Her Instagram handle is Katiana Hernandez Ruiz. So K-A-T-I-A -A Hernandez Ruiz. And if you would do us a favor, as I say goodbye, if you would type in the comments section below, Yes, Hi, it's definitely. me, and just give your handle. That way everybody will know and they can look back in the comments if they want. I'm doing it right now. 
great. My husband did it. I saw him. Jose Rivas saw you. <laughs> okay. okay. Good. Well, it's uh, it's very nice to meet you, and I thank you for this. Uh, really kind gesture. Everybody um, needs somebody to listen to. And, you know, in a, in a way, what we're doing here has become a bit of a group therapy, but I am certainly not professionally trained. <laughs> no, I, but I, you I, have helped so many people. So I'm very blessed that you are doing this for us. Well, thank you. But you are, you are, you are properly and professionally trained. So um, I appreciate what you're doing, and I hope somebody reaches out to you. No, thank you, David. Y le manda saludos. Say hi to your dog. I love him. <laughs> oh, I will. Thank you, love. Okay, Good night. bye. Good thank night. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That's very nice. That's very, very nice. See, that's what I'm talking about. People like that coming up on here. They don't have to, but they want to, and they do. Makes me so happy. So happy. Oh my God. Hi, David. Hi, what's your name? My name is Nicole. I am in Guaynabo, Puerto Rico. Okay. Uh, tell, <laughs> tell me. I can't believe it. Actually, I've been trying for days to, I've been seeing the town halls and it's very interesting to see how many people from the island are reaching out and I love what you're doing. It's awesome. It's what? awesome. Thank you. I'm sure glad we got you on. Tell us about your new normal. Um, well, I've basically been um, at home since it all started. Um, um, I, I'm afraid to go out, to be honest. Um, so I've just been at home, just chilling, you know, like trying not to think much of, you know, everything um, that might happen. You know, um, I I am a business entrepreneur. I've I've had uh, a few businesses throughout um, my life, <laughs> and um, I had started a cleaning and organizing business uh, last year, okay. and it was just beginning to you know boom. Yeah. And and this happened, and now I don't even know, you know, if I'm gonna be able to start it back up again. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm scared <laughs> about, you know, not being able to, you know, pay the bills and stuff, uh, in the future, but I'm okay for now. Um, it's, it's just, it's interesting what's happening. Um, I see a lot of people like on Facebook and stuff that they're really not, you know, following, uh, what, what is being said. Uh, to stay home. Um, I, I have friends, I'm constantly telling them like, listen, this is serious. It's real. And they're having parties and, and they're, you know, in their houses and stuff. And I see them, you know, like not even keeping the six feet uh, apart. So uh, it, it upsets me because, you know, th they're part of the problem, <laughs> you know, and, and I just don't think that you know, this is something um, that is going to be going away anytime soon, you know, like, I fear that it might be a little bit longer than, you know, two weeks here and two weeks there, you know, um, and in but Puerto Rico, I'm and in Puerto Rico, to be positive. <laughs> the, the, the lockdown was extended in Puerto Rico, as you know. Yes. So it will go until, I believe, the 13th of April. Is that correct? I think so. I think it was uh, the 12th or the 13th. The yeah. 12th or the 13th, yes. So, well, I thank you for weighing in from Guaynabo. Uh, I, yes. wish you, I wish you the best with your business. I, um, thank you. I, I always love an entrepreneurial spirit. I have to tell you, <laughs> you have more courage than I do because my father was a salesman, and the idea of going out and cold calling and selling to people, I could never do. So I tip my hat to you. Thank you. Thank you. It's crazy. It's crazy to, you know, uh, you to have to go to people, uh, you know, and just let them know that you're here, you know, and, and it's really hard to, you know, find customers and, and getting yourself known. I've been, you know, trying, um, I started doing like Instagram videos and stuff and that actually helped a lot. But it, it was uh, at the beginning, it was very hard for me because, you know, it, you know, uh, I get scared and and I babble and, you know, so 
but it's okay. It, it's helped. It's, it really brought customers like this whole new age, um, social media, like it really does help. So oh, that we're makes just me happy to hear. Trying. <laughs> well, guess what? I'm going to give you a shout out for everybody watching on here. If you want to reach out to her, her Instagram is Nikki Izzy, N I C K I I. Z I E 23 N I C K I I Z Z I E 23. Nice to meet you, love. Nice to meet you. Bye, David. Say hi to Paddington from me. <laughs> oh, yeah, I will. Good night. All right. Bye. I could never. All these people who sell. Oh, Lord. Now my button ain't working again. All right. So we're going to have to go to the comments section if you want to come on. Uh, if you want to come on, write in the comments section below. And then I can bring you in. At least we seem to have some folks with some good Wi-Fi signals tonight, right? Beggars can't be choosers. That's a good thing. Yay for good Wi-Fi. Okay, here we go. Shit, holy shit, holy shit. <laughs> Hi, David. Well, hello. What is your name? My name is Millie. Millie, you can't be cursing in front of the cross. Hang with I'm, the so cross. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I've been trying to get in touch with you. You're going to have to say your prayers. You're going to have to say your prayers. After I say my prayers the all the time. Uh, tell me where you are in the world. I am in Isabella, Puerto Rico. Isabella. Okay. And tell me about your new normal, love. Oh, my new normal is I miss my beaches and I miss my restaurants. I've been home under um, recovery, just had surgery uh, last month, Okay. a month now. Um, getting used to it. I just did my walk today and went live telling my friends from New York to please be careful and to just follow protocols and make sure that they're okay. I'm worried about my mom, who's 81, who lives in... Um, Bronx. In the Bronx, she, uh, her aide is just going to give up this week on her, and we're hoping we can find someone to help her out because she's my main, main concern. Um, so to bring up a good point that someone hasn't raised here is people who are in need of services, like your mom, who rely on an aide to come in, and that aide is trying to protect themselves. And so yes. I'm sure that aide doesn't want to desert your mom, but she's doing that for her own safety and for your mom's safety. Because exactly. every time that aide comes in the house, she's at risk of exposing your mom. So what, what is the backup? I, right now, we're hoping VNS will send us someone else. But then again, we don't know how that's going to work out. I was trying to thinking of bringing her here. But at 81 and... Um, oh. She has, all her medical she has so many medical problems. I mean, she's diabetic. She has hypertension. She has thyroid. She has, yeah. she has everything you could think of. And I fear her flying coming here. And, you know. Yeah. Don't you think she's in a better place here than she would be to get her on an airplane? And, and yes, French that was exactly what I was discussing with my husband. Uh, yeah. And, um, I think she's safer there, but you know, she lives in the projects and I know that's not clean. They're not doing the bacteria, you know, cleaning up and doing what they're supposed to do. The housing. housing, it's housing. So, you know, I talk to her every day and I make sure that she washes her hands and, you know, she has a short term memory problem and that's what's worrying me more. Her long term is fabulous, but her short term is not. And losing an aid now is making me more nervous for her. And I worry about her a lot. And, you know, she's the only one I have left. She's my mom. I mean, I have a brother and a sister, but they're there in New York. But my mom and I have a close bond. And she's my world. And I, she has all her medical there. And she, everything, I even have her chart where I keep in, I keep in touch with everything. I'm her medical proxy, even though I live in Puerto Rico. There's my hun. How you doing, David? <laughs> Hello, sir. My name is David also. Hi, David. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. She's a big fan of yours. I Dude. appreciate everything you're doing for us and keeping us informed, you know? Definitely. We're Definitely. really, really grateful. Thank We've you. been here since Maria. I lived here eight months to 
prior to Maria hitting us. And trust me, being a New Yorker born and raised was totally very different for us. Yeah. So I learned to become a survivor. Yeah. And that's what I'm telling everybody out there that, you know, please follow, just follow all your protocols. Do what it is that you got to do and be careful. And I just, my mom is my priority right now. I'm glad your mom has you as an advocate. So thank you for sharing your story. And thank you um, for having me on. Well, absolutely. And I, I hope y'all are able to find something that works for her and brings you some peace of mind. Me too. Thank you, David. I appreciate it. You have a wonderful night. You and kiss too. Paddington for me. I will. Trust All me. Right. Lots of kisses. He don't like when I give him kisses. But <laughs> God bless you, man. All Good right, night. David. Good night, y'all. Bye. Good night. Bye -bye. Good night. All right. So just in the comment section below, if you would like to come on, just let me know. Hello, can you hear me? I hear you. The, the connection is not the best, but we might be able to make it work. What's your name? My name is Keisha. Hi, Keisha. Where are you in the world? Right now, I'm in Cornwall, New York. That's where I currently reside. Um, okay. I was just released from the hospital two days ago um, after testing positive with COVID-19 and oh. um, pneumonia as well. Um, oh. I must say that my experience at the hospital was very pleasant. Um, they seem to have a lot of equipment and a lot of the necessary materials, but I must say it was a frightening experience and um, for a couple of days wasn't even sure I was going to make it out alive. Um, I've been blogging a lot about my experience, just sharing it, and I found that it's been helpful to others. So it's just a very scary and real thing. Tell us what led you to the hospital. Um, for a couple of days, I, I was struggling to breathe. I was having a really hard time breathing. Um, and because I work at a school, um, I found it hard to like take off to go, but eventually it got too much and I couldn't breathe. So I decided to go and they kept me. I thought for sure I'd be going back home that I didn't have the coronavirus, that it couldn't happen to me. It didn't happen to me. And sure enough, I was in the hospital for a total of nine days. Did your condition get worse while you were at the hospital? Um, it, it, yes, it started to decline rapidly at the hospital. What's fascinating about you saying that, and I want everyone to hear this, mm -hmm. and this is not an attempt to scare you. This is simply information. Mm -hmm. There was a man who is the chief medical officer at Mount Sinai Hospital in Brooklyn who said what they are seeing mm -hmm. is patients coming in with COVID-19 who decrease rapidly, deteriorate rapidly. Mm -hmm. They go from being able to get some supplemental oxygen to needing much more yes. borderline intubation. Their lung scans go from being somewhat abnormal to very abnormal with, with uh, incredible inflammation. And then they ultimately end up on a ventilator. So yeah. I'm interested as to how you deteriorated. What was your course? Um, that's, that's exactly what you described is exactly what seemed to happen to me. Mm -hmm. um, it got to a point where I became like, I, I wasn't even sure what was happening to me anymore. And then I woke up about three days later. And that's when I was told about all of these things that did happen to me. Um, luckily, what seemed to work for me was that they gave me a drug called Paxoquil. I believe that's the name of it. And I was told that that was a malaria type of drug. And that seemed to help me come back really quickly. Really? Uh-huh. Definitely. 100%. From the moment that they gave me the Plaxoquil, and I was also taking test, I believe it's called Tesla Pearls or Teslon Pearls. I'm not sure. But the Plaxoquil, 100% made a difference right away. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. And, and so from the point you went into the hospital, Mm -hmm. to the point where it started deteriorating was pretty rapid. Yes. Okay. When did you get that Plaquenil or the Plaxiquil? 
um, at first they were giving me something else. I believe it was called Zosin. Um, that didn't seem to be working. And then the Plexoquil, I believe I started getting it maybe, um, probably maybe after. I know I got it once I woke back up and I had my tube and then they started giving it to me then. So well, wait probably- a minute, Wait a minute, did they intubate you? Were you on an intubated tube? Yes, I had a tube. You were, I on had a a tube. you were on a ventilator? I had a tube also. Uh -huh. I had a really rough time. Um, oh my gosh. And it's, it's crazy because I don't even know what happened to me. I remember being like up, but feeling like, this, like something is not going well. And I honestly thought at that moment that I was dying. And then when I woke up and I realized on the board, because you know, you have the board in your room that they change and update every day. When I looked at the date, I'm like, I lost three days. So, and nobody really told me anything that happened. I know the lady that came in to clean and my nurse, they were like, you know, you gave us a real big scare. And the lady that was even cleaning my room was like, wow, we really thought we lost you. She was like, I prayed for you when I walked out of this room. But no one really told me what happened to me within that time. So I just want to be clear. Mm -hmm. You were on a ventilator. Yes. Here's what's astounding. Mm -hmm. The same man I just told you, the medical chief medical officer at Mount Sinai, mm -hmm. said of the 170 patients in the hospital right now, only two or three of them have been able to come off the ventilator. You know what's so funny? I met another guy also that had a ventilator and he came, and I remember being very afraid, even hearing about the ventilator. And the only experience that I knew was that I, I don't even know if this is something I know, something I heard or something I think, but that people that have had ventilators have passed because of bacterial infections. So um, I, I don't want to speak to that and say it's definitely true. I, okay. I, that seemed, anytime something is put inside of you, obviously there can mm -hmm. be some sort of uh, contamination issues. Um, the doctor who was on television today also said sometimes putting people on a ventilator can cause the body's immune system to sort of fight against it, if you will. Like there are okay. situations where that can happen. But I am just amazed, like, you survived. You survived. I mean, yeah. it's that simple. You, you have no idea. I know people that went in with the same exact diagnosis that I had, the same exact path, and didn't make it. And went in when went, went in when you went in. No, just from hearing, not specifically went in when I went in, but just from hearing other people's experiences that they basically had the same exact thing that I had. I was first diagnosed with bilateral pneumonia. Correct, and everybody, that is by that is pneumonia in both lungs. Mm -hmm. So, and that is classic. That they're finding out that is classic for one of the signs for. Uh, COVID-19. But I had no fever, no aches, nothing else that was described. My fever spiked when I was in the hospital. That's when I started to get a fever. So I, I don't know, but I'm just what blessed. Was the name that of the what was the hospital you went to, love? St. Luke's Cornwall in Newburgh. And I must say they were excellent. They treated me well. That is so good to hear. I, you are our first COVID, first of all, we just talked to our first COVID person who was tested. And you were the first person we have heard from in all of our town halls that was in the hospital, got sick and survived. I'm on, I'm, I'm on here, you, you gotta turn that off. Um, I'm sorry, I just got interrupted. No, I was but just I'm saying the you're, first the first, you're, the, you're the first person we've heard from that has literally come back from a very scary place and survived. Yeah, well, I'm, I feel blessed. I oh truly do God. feel blessed. I bet you do. And so you're at home now. Yes, I'm at home. I've been home for two days now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he said three. Three days now. Three. It all kind of. It's all a blur. I get it. It's <laughs> all. A, it's all a blur. Well, I'm glad you gave a shout out to the hospital. I am sure glad. You know, this is information for, from all of us. For but me personally, I can't hear enough of these stories. You know, because every time you hear somebody else's story, um, it educates us. And you know what? I just noticed that somebody said, where was your family? I was all alone. They, you're not allowed to have anybody in. From the moment I went to 
the emergency room doors. My husband had to leave me there. So you are all alone. Um, it, it's, it's frightening. Please, I would love to give people your blog in case they want to go and read what you're writing. What is the blog address? Um, it's, I could put it down. Why don't you write it in my, the comments? That, yeah, you're writing in the comments below. That's perfect. Okay, and it's Once just we, at my page also, Miss Benetton. If you go there, you could click in the link and the blog is there, sure. but I'll add it. So once we're done, just write in the comments below. But I, I tell you what, God bless you, love. I'm glad you shared your story. And Thank you so much. You are a survivor. Thank you yes, for I telling am. us Thank your you. story. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Yes, ma'am. Good night. Good night. Wow. Holy moly. Wow. I could stay up all night listening to stories of survival. All night long listening to stories of survival. Wow. That was unbelievable that was unbelievable uh write in the comment section below if you'd like for me to bring you in who it's hard to top that huh <laughs> wow unbelievable unbelievable okay onward so that little button that I usually click on that would allow me to see who's in the queue is not working y'all know it don't work well so just write in the comments section below if you would like for me to bring you in. There's a Cajun on here? Hey, David. Hi, what is your name? My name is Elizabeth. Elizabeth, where are you in the world? So I'm in Denham Springs. I'm in Louisiana. Oh. David, I grew up two houses from you. So. Where? We have action on Kate Street. Kate Back Road, in. Kate Road. Where was Kate Road? Wait a minute, why am I drawing a blank on where Kate Road was? Okay. Kate Road. Kate Road, um, so by, the, by, the, by the light in Karen Grove, by where my Aunt Gail lives? Yeah. Oh, my Lord. Same street. Oh, my Same Lord. Street. <laughs> wow. I remember that house. I mean, that we're talking, okay, but just for everybody watching, we're talking like two, three, and four years old. Like, we're talking. Oh, yeah. young. Yeah. Like, yeah. played together on the driveway. I remember your mom's car. Oh, my, my. I mean, oh, my, my. Yeah. Well, so, we're, we're talking about an, uh, everybody's new normal. What's your new normal? Yeah. So, you know, I work from home already. But the new normal is <laughs> having to work from home with children. Yeah. That's very different. Um, yeah. I think what's interesting to me is the amount of people that have to work from home now and the companies that were not prepared for that. Uh-huh. And people now having to use Zoom meeting and use Skype and things that they're, they didn't train their employees for. Luckily, I am. And we use that. But um, it's interesting to see my friends' comments and they're not used to working from home. You know, they feel stuck, I guess, so to speak. Yeah, um, you're right. You're right. I mean, look, I'm interviewing the governor of Louisiana tomorrow and I'm, I'm interviewing him via Skype. And I think had I asked them about that six months ago, they'd have laughed at me and been like, well, aren't you going to send a camera here or we can go to a studio, you know, because we're used to that. And that is what we normally offer. But now it's not that the bar has been lowered, but it kind of has because of the situation we're in. And so even people as important as the governor are doing this because it's the same way to reach people. In, in fact, I, I almost think it's more intimate and more approachable, if you will, because there's something about looking at yourself on the phone like this, where yeah. you see if you're overdoing it, you see if you look kind of like a jerk, you, like you can see yourself and it helps you kind of check yourself in the screen. I think even more so than writing, because when you write something, yeah. someone else can perceive the tone very differently uh, than the way. That's right. <laughs> One and you see their tone or you see they're well intended by hearing their voice, it makes such a difference. Mm, you hit the nail on the head. What kind of work do you do? 
So I work for a property management company. Okay. And uh, still employed, which is great. And we'll hopefully be, be employed through this. My husband works for the state. Okay. And um, he has to go in for his job. Okay. But um, we're fortunate for that. The governor of Louisiana has really been fighting reluctant people who just will not stay home. Yes. What does it look like on the street? David, I've been home. So you don't even know. <laughs> Got it. Good. Well, you're one of those compliance people, as I see I, John Bell Edwards on the TV right now. Yeah, you're I one am. of the people who, who are complying. I mean, you know, I was really disappointed to hear that mm -hmm. you guys have a church. I believe, uh, I don't remember which town it is, where the pastor, tell, mm -hmm. every, tell everybody what's happening there. So that was in Central. And from what I read in the article, I think it said 1,800 people gathered. Um, and it's, it's... The pastor said it was a political hoax and he invited people to come out. It's just unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. So um, very disappointing. Uh, can't stay home. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to be out, stay home. Protect our children, protect our parents. Um, I'm in that sandwich generation where I have younger children and older parents, mm -hmm. you know, so right in the middle. And we just want to protect everyone. So I think they need to listen to John Bell. Um, you know, Amen. I need to go to the grocery store. Be careful. Amen. Listen, it's uh, it's so nice to meet someone who goes all hey, the you way, out, babe. You out. all the way back to when I was in diapers. Oh my God! Yes, wow. And both UL grads. Both so. UL grads. Amen. Go Cajuns. Okay, love. So nice to see you. Good luck to you. See you too. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye bye. How cool is that? And random, random. How cool is that? Okay. Let's see. So. If you want to join in, go ahead and leave a comment below, and then I can bring you in. Oh, David's southern accent immediately came out. That's so nice. <laughs> yeah, it's actually funny when people say to me, I don't hear your accent. Because they say, what did you do to get rid of it? I say, I, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. Hi, David. Hello, what is your name? Lorelli. Lorelli, where are you in the world? I am in Richmond Hill, New York in Queens. Okay, and tell us about your new normal. I, I see that you're a school counselor. I am a school counselor and this is my bedroom, which is my new normal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, staying home, my daughter's working hard. I just wanted to let everyone know how hard we're working as educators trying to get our families online. I work in a predominantly Spanish community and they don't have devices. So they're doing their work from their phones. We have uh, 80 children that are not connected at all. Uh, trying to reach out with them, video chatting, doing the WhatsApp, <laughs> trying to work it out. Um, and then families that live in, in apartments that you're talking about four families in one apartment. Mm -hmm. And Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Did you say four families in one apartment? Yes. There are a lot of, we have a lot of issues with immigration. These are, these are hardworking families that are yeah. poor. Um, so it's just, it's a different, it's, it's, it's hard not being on the front line with them. Yeah. Um, I get super emotional. Um, what makes you emotional? Uh, not being able to have that contact with the children when they tell you what's going on or what's wrong. Yeah. Um, not being able to communicate with all the parents to know if they're okay. I mean, we are very lucky. I only have one child that I haven't communicated with. I have 40 children that I see on a weekly basis. Um, but just knowing and also knowing that that they're not getting their educational opportunity right now. You know, there are children that, that are going to get a, a, a different type of education, even from the same school. Yeah. Um, and not being but, able to help the parents. But the degree to which they learn is the degree to which you bend. 
I'm convinced mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. We can't hold people to the same standards we did and would in a normal world. We ain't living in a normal world. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, you and I was thinking about this the other night because mm -hmm. we heard from a lot of teachers, and it occurred to me that some people might use a phone. And so, you know, and then we start talking about, do they have an unlimited data plan? And if they don't have an unlimited data plan, then they're charging minutes so that their kid can learn. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a lot. And a lot of these parents have to go out and work. Yeah. And, um, or they're not working. And they, they don't, they're not going to have the money for it. So, um, and I work near Elmhurst Hospital. So that, has, uh, that weighs heavily on me with uh, my families. But um, yeah, it's, it's, this is the new normal. We try our best, but I just want to say that the teachers are working amazingly. We have a great principal, um, and I, I'm working from 8 to 4.30 nonstop. I eat, and I continue to work and work with the families. But um, Thank you for what you're doing, and thanks thank for telling you. us about it. Thank you for what you do. Yeah, thank you, love. Have a good night. Thank you too. Bye-bye. Always. A lot of teachers, a lot of teachers, which is wonderful. Uh, okay, in the comments section below, if you want me to bring you in. Looks like there's some questions here. Oh no, people just leaving comments. <laughs> I thought people had written questions. Oh, hi, Rob from Sacramento. Let's bring in Rob for a second and see if he's available. For real? Hi, Rob. Well, hello, David. How are you? I am wonderful. Tell everybody who you are and where you are in the world. Well, I am in, first of all, it's good to see you, David. It's great to see you. In Sacramento, California. And um, I first met you, gosh, over 10 years ago when you were at the CBS station here. So it's nice to see you. I've, you've done wonderful work all across this world. And you are really a shining example of what a journalism journalist is. And I salute you. Well, I have a lot of respect for, for what you do and, and, and also the human you are. So I appreciate that. You broke up for a moment. So I want everybody to know Rob lives in Sacramento, California. Uh, Rob is a uh, television host who works for the PBS station there. And I believe your show is Rob on the Road. Am I right? That's right, David. Uh, it's called Rob on the Road, Rob at Home now, because we are huh. right here. Actually, this, this porch is our studio for real for the next whoever knows how long because as we know this is a changing situation every day and yeah. you know we can only hope for the best so what is your new normal given that you know that what what rob's show is is literally he will just take you on the road and it's like this conversation that he has with people who do some of the most random fascinating mm -hmm. uh, what i love about what you do rob is it's kind of an escape from the normalcy of the world to stuff that I otherwise might never know, but yet you just kind of, it's, it's an opportunity to just get lost for a minute and I love it. So what are you doing? What's the new normal with your show from home? You know, honestly, what I've been trying to do, David is, and, and thank you for what you said. I, I try to provide, um, I wish I could show you right now if I could turn this around, but I'll do this. Just tap the screen, tap the screen twice. It'll turn around. You see that sign over there in the yard, visualize healing. I do. I love that. Um, but that's one of the things that I try to do in my show is that I try to bring people what I think is missing from television, and that is stories of everyday living, people getting through, um, that the journey is worth it, despite yeah. the challenges. And yeah. so right now, it has been a lot of just ins trying to do some inspirational talking from here at the house, and then bringing up some old stories that I find um, comforting for people, uh, showing people that other people have been through hard times and that they will get through this if they do the right thing. 
by realizing that we all impact each other's lives tremendously. And this is an example of just realizing that for a lot of people. Hmm. Rob, in California, the governor issued a stay-at-home order, mm -hmm. and he, he's, he's taken some pretty bold moves fairly early on. To let everybody know what life is like daily under those restrictions. It's odd. Um, all schools, as in many places in the United States and in the world, are out. Um, here, I just went to the grocery store. I frankly felt guilty about doing that. Um, because coming back to the house and I thought, gosh, what if I bring something into my partner? Um, not to mention every time I leave, I feel like I'm delaying the, t the long period of, of quarantine, but I don't leave much. But I did drive around the Capitol just now headed to the grocery store and it was um, pretty, pretty, pretty barren. I saw people exercising uh, around Capitol Park. I saw a lot of bicycle police officers um, at the grocery store. You have to wait six feet apart. They're allowing maybe 15, 20 people in grocery stores at a time. Um, they are rationing the items that are being, were being hoarded. Um, and then now that they're restocking, you're allowed to take one or two um, toilet paper, things like that. There's still no sand sanitizer. People are making their own. But the, it's, um, David, you know this city very well. You covered Northern California. And it's very um, barren. Uh, I did cover Southern, well, Northern California and then Southern California. But I always like to say Sacramento is where I became a man. And looking at the greenery behind you and sort of seeing your face makes me just miss, miss that area. I had a wonderful time there. You're getting some nice comments here from people who love your show. And then other people are saying, where is the show available? So let everybody know. Sure. We are on PBS, the public uh, broadcasting station. And we, uh, we broadcast all across Northern California on PBS. Um, we give our show to all the PBS stations in the country. It's robontheroad.org. And we produce the show out of PBS KVIE. There you and, go. Um, our goal is just to bring people right now to take them places that are closed right now. Oh, yeah. um, so the piece we're doing this weekend is Safari West. Did you ever go to Safari West? No. Okay, so it's a um, animal sanctuary. So we're going to see giraffes, and we're going to see rhinos, and we're going to see zebra in the huts you can stay in because they're closed right now. So we're going to take a trip down memory lane until we can go back to real life, hopefully. If you can, if you can take us on a trip, Everybody wants it because we can't go on a trip. So it sounds good, Rob. It's really nice to see you, and uh, I, I'm glad you're well. How's your dog? Paddington is great. He, um, he's sleeping, but it's he and I, man. He and I. Jer look, bless Jeremy. Sorry, Jeremy's by himself. I wish I could get him out here, but he's in Los Angeles. But we're good. We're good. Thank you for asking. Thank nice you. I appreciate you beeping in. See you. Re really nice to see you, Rob. Bye -bye. You too, buddy. Bye-bye. Very, very nice. Very, very nice guy. All right, moving on. Hello. Hey, David, how you doing? I am okay. What is your name? Karen. What, what is your name? Karen. Hi, Karen. Where are you in the world? We're in Auburn, Alabama. Oh, Alabama. All right. Yes. Tell me, tell me about y'all new normal. Uh, well, uh, we uh, own a vet clinic in Opelika, Alabama. And we have our clinic uh, closed right now uh, due to the coronavirus. Uh, my family um, actually here from Rico after Hurricane Maria. Okay, so, here, so here's 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 what we going here's what we going. If she's still watching, just let her know. Um, well, if you're still watching, you can hear me. Uh, we're having a hard time with your internet signal. It's breaking up. Not able to see you. So, if you're able to go on a Wi-Fi, maybe reset your phone. We can try that. Maybe use somebody else's phone. Um, but we really we really can't hear you or see you. Okay, everybody in the comment section below, if you want me to bring you in, just leave a comment and I will, I will bring you in. Hey, 
Hey, Alan, turn it before. off. Hi. Hi, what is your name? Samantha. Hello, Sam. Sam. Hi, Sam. Where are you in the world? Seattle, Washington. Okay. All right. Tell me about the, you know, you guys were like the first hot spot of hot spots in the, in the country. No me diga. We so still are. Tell me about your new normal. Uh, so we are prepping. We are surviving. Yeah. And we are communicating. It's a different um, normal. Mm -hmm. I actually work for the county, for our King County, mm -hmm. and I work for transit. Mm -hmm. So for our frontline drivers. And it's been interesting. We have a huge homeless population that we have to deal with. And uh, we have elderly that are vulnerable. And my own son at this point uh, had to be tested at 25 um, because he owns a barber shop and was exposed and is exhibiting symptoms. No results yet? No, we won't get them for four days. It was very difficult to get him a test. How is he feeling now? Awful. Mm. Is he isolated? He is not completely isolated. I say that because he has his own apartment, two yeah. bedroom in the Redmond area of Washington. Um, but he also has a family. So he has a girlfriend and two children. I am a grandma. I know I look young. You look very young. <laughs> yeah, that's what Puerto Rican does to you. <laughs> life, life comes at you fast. I get it. I, I get it. Uh, it's all aspects. I've been watching you because my family is from my way. Yes. And my dad hasn't left his home since Maria. Yeah. And my grandmother is 94. My grandfather, unfortunately, passed two days before the hurricane. Two days. Huh? Yeah, and my aunt passed away three days after the hurricane because she wasn't able to receive her chemo treatment. So we live real life, even though I'm in Seattle. Yeah. Do you mm -hmm. get back? Do you get back often? I ha don't get back often. I have seven children, so. What? <laughs> yeah. We have seven kids. God, I'm drinking yeah. water, but I need to see if I have some alcohol. <laughs> Holy moly. Sick. I gave you the range. Kid. 25. <laughs> yeah, what's the, what's the youngest? How old is the youngest? The youngest are 15. 20, okay. So we have four teenagers in our house right now who are doing the Seattle Highline <laughs> District um, school district. And unfortunately it is actually one of the districts that doesn't have as much care for. So we are just getting some, um, Chromebooks for our children, which will happen on Tuesday. Mm. I, I personally have it at, at this location, but it is also, I mean, it's low income. It's always been, I live typically in like the five corners portion of Berrien so it's 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 been it's been hard I can hear it in your voice I can <laughs> hear it in your voice well yeah um thank you for sharing your slice of life with us mm -hmm. I wish Como you siempre. <laughs> what, what does that mean forever like always like always <laughs> uh people keep saying she's so young how does she have that many kids mm, don't start no I'm just <laughs> That's not so, a question you want to ask. I mean, it's a question you can ask, but that's what happens when you have a mixed family yep. and you embrace all of your children regardless. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love My it. personal oldest is 21. I love it. So. I love it. Uh, well, yeah. thank you. Thank you for weighing in. I wish you all the best. So, David, I do yeah. want to say okay. thank you so much because because of you, I was able to forewarn my family in PR about the hurricane and all the issues that were going to happen. So my dad and my grandmother, who's 94, went to the bathroom and put themselves in the tub and survived the hurricane in Mayagüe. Thank God. Okay. The next day they left and they went to the rainforest up in the mountains, as you know, and stayed. But not everybody has the information that you're giving. So please keep giving it. And especially about, you know, our LGBTQ Hala from PR, like we're real. We really do live that life. 
And it's unfortunate that the island doesn't see it all the time. Um, and I think that these times where we have corona hitting, um, we need as much support and as much support means as much education. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. Well said. I hear you on all points. Thank you. You're welcome, love. Have a great night. You too. Thank you. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, I hear the sirens. The Instagram police are coming. What time y'all think? What, how much time do you think we got left? I think we got about four minutes. So who wants to do something in four minutes? We'll do another hour, but we got about four minutes. Maybe two minutes. Somebody says, I'm here to express my new normal. I hope your new normal can go four minutes because the Instagram police don't have any slack. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm good. So I got four minutes for the Instagram police come and cut us off. Tell us about you. Well, first of all, tell us what your name is. Um, my name is Melinda. I'm a surgical tech, histo tech. So I still have to go to work every day. A what? A what tech? A uh, histo tech. So I work with patients who have skin cancer. Oh. So we still have to treat them and take much seriously, I think, because mm -hmm. everybody's out still doing their own, which is sad. Where are you in the world? Uh, um, Dade City, Florida. And your new normal is? Still going to work, unfortunately. My husband also has to go to work because his work is producing food. So we still have to take our kid to daycare and stuff. So it's a bummer. We need both of you. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> Patients with, let me tell you something, skin cancer don't want to wait. And food, and food we need. So... Correct. Correct, but we... Um, when, when you go outside, do you mm -hmm. have a mask? Do you have, do you have gloves? Um, so when I'm in the lab and taking care of patients, I do have my mask and, and, and gloves, but we don't have gowns to protect our clothing with. So my normal, when I come up from work, I take off my clothing in the garage and then go straight take a shower because I'm not sure what we're coming in contact with, which on um, one of our facilities, some a patient had the COVID and they called the CDC to have them tested twice. The provider called and the CDC said that he didn't meet criteria. So the gentleman went, got tested in another county and he was tested positive. So they closed the clinic down for seven days. But it's sad to hear that the CDC is not really taken seriously either as well. Yeah, and, and here's the thing. It may be that they're not taking it seriously, but the bottom line is the United States of America just does not have as many tests as we should. Because here's the reality, everyone. When we give you the latest information on cases, we're not looking forward, we're looking backward. Mm -hmm. We're only telling you based on the past of the tests that were done. The All tests right. of today don't tell you about what's coming tomorrow. It only looks in the rear view mirror. That's mm -hmm. why testing is absolutely essential. So you at least know the wave that is building as you move forward. And you got smarter people than me who can thereby project based on the data. Um, I thank you. I thank you for weighing in and I wish you all the best. Please protect yourself. I will. Thank you for having me in. Thank you for yes. everything you've done. Yes, ma'am. Have a good night. You too. Okay, everybody. So that will be the last one for this hour. Uh, I'll come down. I'll take a minute and I'll come right back up. We'll see you shortly. And we are back at 9.04 p.m. 10.04 p.m. is when we'll conclude. I'll wait for everybody to get on and then we'll start again. Welcome back in. We'll give everybody a chance to get on and then we will get going. social distance apart, scattered across both the house floor and the balconies where the spectators usually sit. So enough members could be present to block Thomas Massey's set from living each other's lives in as little danger as possible. Okay, so welcome back in. Uh, this is our nightly town hall. We do it every night, have been doing it every night at 8 p.m. Uh, so if you are new to it, we welcome you. If you 
are a frequent visitor, welcome back. I'm watching this crazy business about this Republican body to come back and take a vote instead of a roll call. Why would you bring everybody together given the times we're living in? <laughs> Hi, David. Hello, what is your name? <laughs> Mari. Hi, where are you in the world? Chicago. Okay, Chicago. Tell us about your new normal. Um, well, I have three small children, three, five, and eight, okay. and I'm home with them. Um, my husband's still working. He works at um, Moody Bible Institute, which is a university here in the city, and he has to go feed international students that still live on campus because he can't go home. So he's still going to work every morning and working with them and then coming home and changing his clothes as soon as he walks in the door and going straight for the shower to make sure that he keeps us safe. Um, my parents live, we have an in-law unit for them and they're in their 60s and 70s and they live upstairs. So I'm pretty much stuck at home just trying to keep everybody healthy and safe. How's that on your sanity? Oh, I've had moments where I've lost it. <laughs> where I, I'll text my husband and say, angry mom came to visit today. <laughs> um, but, you know, getting some exercise in and getting some time just to myself and helps a lot. And the days that we are able to go outside and just take a walk with the kids um, helps a lot, too. Yeah, it does. But the, the mayor shut us down. Um, I was so, about I was about to say what tell tell us about the mayor's order that came just about four or five hours ago. So um, Chicago, we knew keeping Chicago in when the weather gets warm <laughs> is is gonna was gonna be rough, right. and so we got a sixty degree day a couple days ago, and um, everybody was out on the lakefront. Everybody, we have a trail called the six hundred six. Um, which was like an old railway or railroad um, line. And so it's just like for exercise and everybody was out in masses. And so she came down on us hard and said, that's it. And so the police are out there. They've closed down a lot of the parks. Um, the park by my house has like a track. And so we're allowed to go out there and like walk the track as long as we're And the, the police will walk or will drive around and tell us on the, like the, you know, talk to us and say six feet, you know, and let us know that we can't be in crowds. So are you allowed to go out to exercise? Yes, we're allowed to go out and take walks and exercise as long as we're not in crowds. But the the main lakefront is yeah. shut down. Yeah. And a lot of like the trails and things are shut down completely. Yeah. Mary Lori Lightfoot ain't messing around. No. <laughs> and we knew she wasn't. We knew it was going to happen. Around. Well, yeah. thank you for thank you for telling us about your new normal. I love your glasses. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, David. Have a, have a wonderful night. You too. Good night. All right. Good night. Okay. Moving right along. Hello again. Oh, hello. <laughs> Hi. What is your name? Laura. Tell us about your uh, new normal. I guess you have an update for us. So, update. I keep booking, but people are canceling more now. Because you're a travel agent, right? Yes, I'm a travel agent. Okay. As you can see, I'm actually waiting for a call, and I haven't got any. So, <laughs> so this is my new normal. Just waiting for people to hopefully book or to help them cancel. To keep them calm because they're calling and like usually like really really nervous about oh my god what's gonna happen so now if people cancel do you get financially hit with that <sighs> technically yes it affects our revenue but since they can still rebook they give them like a voucher so it's not that bad so we can still have the chance gotcha, gotcha. but it's fun i like it my normal just being here watching movies be with my little baby that's right there. Oh. <laughs> I, I wanna I wanna use a travel agent for my next vacation because I hate planning things. I just you know you know why? Because my work requires so much planning and I just put so much of my life into my work. And yeah. when it comes to my personal time, I don't wanna plan a damn thing. <laughs> I'll do it for you. Message like, me next I time. I'll do it. Like my partner Jeremy will tell you, I want to like sit in a chair and have somebody say, 
let's go, David. Step here, go there. We're going to pick you up. <laughs> I literally want to be told what to do. At home in my personal life, I'm a big old follower, you know? Yeah. What do you want to what do? You wanna do? Um, That's, I'm actually, it's funny. I went to school not for anything travel related. Right. I went to school for filmmaking. Oh, okay. So this is something good. I still get to help people. I have fun with it. It's something to do until I can get my next adventure. Love it. So if somebody asks for your contact information, how can they contact you? They can message me. And what is, your, what, what is your Instagram handle? It's LA. Oh, my God. Uh, I, I have it right here. I have it right here. Yeah. It is Lauren Garcia 3105. Laura. Laura. Laura yeah. Garcia 3105. Nice to see you again, Laura. Yeah. Well, can I ask you something? Yella. Yeah, how are you doing with Paddington with all of these um, lockdown and everything? How can you get Well, him we're doing his dog walker is still walking him. So what happens is I crack the door open and I have a glove. <laughs> I put on a glove and I'm holding his leash and I give the leash to the dog walker and they go. And he okay. lives his best life and I get pictures sent to me. <laughs> and then he comes back and like, it, it's classic. I have his lunch served. So he walks right in, he eats, he drinks a little bit of water and then he proceeds to walk all over the house and rub his wet <laughs> face on my white furniture that I bought before I bought him. Oh my God. I, I have, listen, I have given up being <laughs> exasperated. I just watch him do it now and I think this is what parents go through. This is, yes. just, this is just the life of being a parent. I have a Shiba Inu, so he just lays there asleep. He comes when he wants, so he's like a cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I have a picture? Sure, love. Thank you. Oh, well, the... Thank you so much. I'm from Puerto Rico also, so thank you so much for what you do for the island. Well, I thank you. My best to you. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Somebody who said my dog does the same thing. I just, I mean, I guess his face is wet and he wants to dry it off. But here's the weird thing. It's not just when it's wet. He does that after he eats every time. Like he ate dinner tonight and then he comes and just rubs himself all over the furniture. I'm like, why? <laughs> I can't believe I make it. Well, you, you made it. What's your name? Brenda. Hi, Brenda. I live where, where are you in the world? I I live in in the east coast of the island, which is Bravo, but I work in the west part of the island because I'm an engineer. So you live in the, normal... wait, 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 wait. I, I want to understand. You live in the eastern part of the island, but you work in the western part of the island. That's right, because I have like a very specialized type of knowledge, and it's not very easy to find a job in specific areas because I'm a freelancer. How long is your commute every day? No, I stay in the west part of the island. Oh, you stay in the west. Okay. All right. Fair. Yeah. Tell us about your new normal, love. Well, actually, I have my mom, which is almost 80, and my daughter, which is 17. They are locked here because um, uh, we all know about all the, 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 the things that are going on. So my mom used to, to work in a medical device industry here. So as soon as she heard about how it's spread, she told me I need to lock down because I'm almost 80. I had diabetes, I had high, high blood pressure, so I need to lock down. So no problem with that. Um, my daughter, she's um, in 11th grade and she's studying like um, by, she's in a private school here, so she studied by herself. So I'm basically, uh, when I arrive here from my job, I um, have to remove all my stuff and I have to put in the washer machine. I have to go to the bathroom, take a bath. And um, I don't touch neither of them. My uh, load is outside, so I bring a bag and from that to the, to the, um, to the laundry and I don't allow them to touch it or something. I'm pretty like concerned because I used to go to Rincon to a supermarket because they have like uh, vegetables or some things like that. And it happens that it was closed today. 
because they have some casualties uh, down there. So well, I use so, global. So let's tell everybody what happened. In Rincon, Puerto Rico, there was a grocery store closed because... Um, because the, the, wife, the wife of one of the persons who worked there and his son, uh, she died because of apparently COVID-19 and they closed down that. Yes, yeah, so I her visited husband... Go ahead, go ahead. Her husband and his son worked in that supermarket. So I was just like, oh my God, but no, I no, use no, 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 no. The husband, No, the husband's a police officer. He's so a child. police officer and a son, so she died. So I was just like... Correct, correct. So she oh. died. The son works, yeah. And so they closed down the police station actually in Rincon uh, because of all of that. And she was actually tested after her death. So we're waiting. Yeah. Uh, well, I, no, we got the results today. She tested positive, uh, the government announced. Yeah. So, and she is the first death of a Puerto Rican... Um, resident, somebody who actually resides there. The other deaths were uh, tourists and the other infections. So. so it happens that I went to that store on Tuesday. Oh, yeah. So we're just like, oh my God, I use all the protective equipment. I work in a medical industry uh, company, so I know how to use all the protection, so gloves and masks and so forth. But again, you're like, they don't stop the production because we make some products that are for people who got um, dialysis and got um, cancer ports. So I'm just like, it's something that is needed. So I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nurse, but it happens that I'm an engineer. So we have to continue like trying to help in whatever stand we are. I don't want to end this conversation without telling you that I really appreciate what you're doing for the island and I'm just like I can't believe it I make it because well, I'm working here you yeah I'm working here from it's from 8 a.m and it's almost here 9 18 so I'm still working in my computer I just say mm -hmm. I'm gonna try it again I'm glad you did and I'm so glad we could get you on it's very nice to meet you and uh, thank you, thank you for telling us your story. And uh, I hope your mom stays healthy. Keep keep track of her. Keep her safe. Uh, yeah. Can we take a photo? Of course. Go ahead. Sure. Thank you very much. You got it. Let me try it again. Yes, I got it. Great. Have a wonderful night. You too. Bye bye. Okay. Bye, Brenda. Okay. Moving along. A couple of people, it says unable to join. I just want to remind everyone that if your account is private, you're not going to be able to be brought in. I can't bring you in. Oh, my God, David. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi from Madrid. Madrid, Spain. Yeah. Oh, what is your name? My name is Josian. I'm from Puerto Rico. Sorry, I was laying in bed. It's 2 a.m., so I'm kind of a mess. I'm shocked that you're awake. Tell us what you're doing there. Well, I'm studying and doing my master's degree in digital marketing. Okay. Yeah, and I've been here for around six months okay. with two friends also from Puerto Rico, and we've been living this COVID situation very closely. Yes, please tell us what your new normal is there. What's the situation? Well, the situation is very, like, everything is, like, very uncertain. Like, um, the streets are very empty. Um, going to the supermarket is, like, this whole process. I was, like, very anxious of leaving the house. We haven't left the house for around 15 days or so. Um, then we went to a supermarket and they are actually taking all the precautions, like um, disinfecting the carts and giving um, gloves. Um, so it's very strict, so I felt safe. Um, and then when we came home, we cleansed everything. Like every, we came home and we left the shoes uh, beside the door and we cleaned everything. Uh, we're just taking every precaution that we can um, and just letting our families know that we're okay and that uh, the situation is very serious, but we're just taking it calmly and just, you know, doing what we can. 
So other than the supermarket, do you go outside at all? No, no, I'm super scared of going out. Um, nothing. We haven't gone out. Only to a how supermarket. Sh how strict are the authorities being? They are very strict. Um, we knew that we couldn't go, go like in groups. We have to go like alone. Um, but we only have um, a, a time of, um, that we could go out because even though we're in quarantine, I still go to work um, from my house. I do digital marketing, so I'm able to work from home. And I had a break to go out and do um, the groceries and stuff. So we went together, but separate. So we wouldn't talk to each other and we would keep distance. Um, but when we were um, taking our groceries home, an employee noticed that we were together because my friend gave me like a bag so we could bring everything to our house. And they were like, no, you cannot be together. Um, especially like from the house, we live three here. We're not supposed to leave the house more than only if if someone's gonna is going is going out to buy something it has to be one from the house. We cannot leave. We cannot leave the house together, even if we don't talk to each other or whatever. So that was very strict. Um, and there's also a lot of policemen in the area, um, looking around, and we've seen them asking people like, "What are you gonna do? Or where are you going? Or are you two together?" So they're very very strict. You know, the governor of Puerto Rico just announced that starting on March 31st, only one person can leave the house at a time. Yeah. So where are you from on the island? Uh, Umacao, East. Umacao. Yeah. yeah. And you, how are your parents? They're great, actually. I just finished a video. That's why I'm awake, because I was in a video chat with my whole family, just, you know, letting them know that we're safe, we have food. And also, they let me know how the situation is on the island. Um, because, you know, it's just taken us, at least for me, has taken me by surprise the rapid um, spread of this. So I just want to know that everyone's safe and, you know, always keeping in contact with my friends and family. Tell me what you plan to do once you get your master's. I want, I would like to stay a little bit more here in Spain, um, get more um, working experience. Right now I'm at a consulting agency and have learned a lot, Love uh, would love to explore Europe. So I would like to get um, more working experience somewhere in Europe, um, only time will tell. Um, that's my plan for now. Do you wanna go back to Puerto Rico? I definitely wanna go back to Puerto Rico, but I would like to explore a little bit of the world, um, enjoy the experience to the fullest, and then just when I'm ready to go home, I'll, I'll know it. Well, I wish you my best. Thank you, David, and thank you. Everything you've done for the island, we're eternally grateful. And we're always um, pendiente, like looking to your social media and seeing where you're coming with. So thank you very much. Thank you. I wish you all the best. Good luck to you. Thanks for joining thank us. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Bye-bye. Oh, my cow. Who might be the first? I think that's one of the first people we've heard from. Oh, my cow. You know, I've never been to Spain never been to Spain. Want to go soon. Emily. Hi, David. Hi. Where are you in the world? Well, I am in San Juan. Okay. I'm from Puerto Rico, born and raised. Okay. Yeah, Tell so us. my Tell new us. normal, um, yeah. I've like, I have managed, you know, to keep myself calm by doing some kind of physical activity every day so I can distract my, my house since it is about san juan but sometimes our friends in san juan i don't know what it is about the wi-fi signal or what but so often when we hear from people in san juan they have or even guaynabo i don't know what it is i don't know i'm sorry emily Holy <laughs> hey david <laughs> hello sir what is your name My name is carlos Carlos? Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Mayaguez, Puerto Rico. Mayaguez, okay. We just talked to a lady on the western side. Tell us about your new normal. Um, staying home as much as I can. Um, look at the
the news as much as I can. And basically it is. I'm, I have um, hard problems, so I can't go outside. I can't expose yeah. myself. Yeah. So it's just basically it. <laughs> don't, don't let anybody come near you. Nope. Don't nope. let anybody come near you. No, I can't. So, oh, you do you live alone? Do you have family? Well, actually, I, I got my mom here. She's also a heart patient, brain tumor. I mean, she got a whole bunch of conditions. She's she's very old. So, how old is how old is she? Eighty. That's not you say very old. I thought you were about to tell me ninety eight or a hundred. Nah, nah. I feel like 80 today is like, oh, okay, you're 80, great. You know, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, well, I think it's Nancy Pelosi's birthday today. So let me look this up. But I think Miss Pelosi is almost 78 or something. She's the Speaker of the House. Let's see. Oh, Nancy okay. Pelosi is 80 years old today, Carlos. How you like that? Oh, there you go. 88. <laughs> 88 old man. Well, I'm I um I'm glad you weighed in and you seem like you're taking it okay. Like you seem quite chill. You have to. You have to. There's no other way to deal with this, you know? Yeah. Society is gonna come at one point, but you gotta try to look for something different. Even if you look at the news, you always gotta try to look for something something good. It's always gonna be something good out there. Yeah. You know? it's, yeah, it's the only way to deal with this. Hey, did you hear the story I told about that marine that uh, marine who was treated at the Miguez Hospital for COVID and survived? Yep. Yes, was that indeed. not was that not an incredible story? That was an incredible one. And he I, was eighty seven. Yep, and a bunch of conditions on it. And a bunch of oh, and you know what I heard today, you guys, um, is that a ninety seven or no? Was she ninety seven? Hold on. She, Italy, Italian woman survives COVID. Not she, was she 100? I think she was maybe 100. No, no, no. Here we go. 95-year-old grandmother is oldest to recover from coronavirus in Italy. 90, 95. How you like that? Mm -mm -mm. 95. Yep. Yep. It's amazing. It's amazing. Well, Carlos, I wish you uh, my very best. Hey, thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a wonderful night. Uh, you too. 95 years old. Is that not incredible? Yes, it is. Unbelievable. Yes, it is. Unbelievable. Okay, so moving right along. Moving right along. Hey! Hello there. What's your name? Uh, Francisco. Fico. How you doing, man? Hi, Fico. Uh, where are you <laughs> in the world? Uh, Guaynao, Puerto Rico. Okay. Well, you got a good Wi-Fi signal, so we tell all the Guaynabo people, whatever, <laughs> whatever Fico's on, you, uh, you need to get on his, his um, Wi-Fi uh, network. Everybody's going to come to your house and get a signal. Tell hey. me about the new normal, my friend. Uh, uh, cabin fever, man. First off, David, I want to thank you on behalf of all Puerto Ricans. I, I bet you get this all the time doing this, but I appreciate the work you've been doing since uh, Hurricane Maria, right? So just want to say thank you one more time. So, you know, thanks. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the new normal, uh, becoming a, a school teacher, a chef, uh, <laughs> doing maintenance, uh, working out. Uh, I mean... <laughs> doing everything, uh, trying to uh, not become crazy. I have two girls, uh, my wife, uh, both working. So yeah, uh, you know, what what, what do you gotta do, do? What do you do for a living during normal times? Well, uh, I work on outdoor advertising billboards. Okay. So it's kind of tough because now uh, there's no people on the streets. So it's kind of you know, uh, and my wife uh, works at a high school. Uh, she's an uh, assistant to a director, uh, the director at the, at the school. 
So we've been working from home and homeschooling the girls, you know. But hey, we gotta do what we gotta do. Stay I safe, know. everybody. So, how uh, old are the girls? They're gonna be ten and eight. Okay. What so we've think? been doing uh, watching movies and uh, doing school and playing. Uh, we went down the rabbit hole, uh, the TikTok rabbit hole, doing the dance and everything. <laughs> so, oh, you did? Is. So we've been doing dances, you know, taking breaks and, you know, just having fun and watching movies and watching TV series and playing with the dog and stuff, you know. You're making the best of it. What do you, yeah. what do you think of uh, the way the government is responding and uh, <sighs> the governor's decision to further lock the island down? I mean, it's it's a tough decision because every but everybody has a different situation, you know, uh, work or where they're living and and, and how how big is the family. But I think Puerto Rico uh, reacted, you know, quite fast. I think they could have done faster. They shouldn't have left any cruise ships, you know, docking Puerto Rico <laughs> with everything that was uh, was going on in, in China and then all on in Europe, but I think what they've done with the two extra, we, uh, you know, until April 12th, right? I yes. think, I think it, they needed to do, they, they need to do that. Yeah. I mean, it, it sucks, but they need to do it because I think they're going to, the, the numbers are going to rise and, and you need to, the, these two weeks, I think are going to be more important than the first two weeks. Because as, 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 as long as you start doing tests, the numbers is going to rise up because it's, that's normal with all the countries. So uh, people are going to, you know, get scared. And, 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 and um, it's, it's, you got to do it. You got to stay home. It sucks for everybody. But these two weeks, I think, are the, the most important uh, compared to the first two weeks. But, uh, I mean, like, they could have they reacted quicker. But uh, but at least they did, you know, compared to other countries, especially the United States, well, people going in spring breaks. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, they, they did they did quite a good job, but I, they could have done better. But, you know, compared to other countries. <laughs> Francisco from Guaynabo, thank you for weighing in tonight, my friend. Thank you again, man. And have a good night. You too. So what we're all looking at, ladies and gentlemen, is a new TikTok star, the Dan yeah. from Guaynabo. Look for me, yeah. <laughs> Have care, a Jerry. good night, man. Good night. Yeah. Whoever said that I should do a TikTok has lost their mind. I can barely manage Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter without feeling like I'm underwater. And y'all want me to do TikTok. Heck no. <laughs> Oh, somebody pressed the button. What do we tell people who press the button but don't want to be on? We have a hashtag for that. What do we tell people? Watch in the comment section below. Watch, watch what people start writing. Hashtag what? What do we say? What do we say? Hey. Good evening. What is your name? Good evening. My name is Ramiro Maragón. Uh, I'm from Puerto Rico, but living in Florida. Okay, and tell us about your new normal, sir. Well, I'm a music teacher, so basically we start on Monday um, um, online, so it's going to be an adventure. How are you going to teach music online? I'm interested. <laughs> That's going to be very interesting, you know. <laughs> what are you planning? Because um, I teach K to fifth grade elementary school, and um Basically, I have a lot of tours online, you know, the kids that are watching videos and practice the movement and for the little ones, for, so for t third to fifth grade, so they can, you know, do something a little more interesting. Yeah. Like body percussion and, imit you know, it's a little <laughs> history of music. <laughs> so, not too much homework. <laughs> not too, I was just about to say, how do you even test? <laughs> So I'm just planning to um, just a small homework, you know, they can send a video. Yeah, you know? right, right. Yeah. That's good. That's good. They can send a video for the, you know, for the end of the year, because I don't think that we're coming back. I'm, I'm, I don't see that it's going to happen. Uh, I don't see that either. I, I was so disappointed that. today because I watching the president, you know, the um, we was waiting for Betsy the boss to, you know, the, the school. 
the head of the school, and, and then they caught on the news that part. So, you know, we was waiting for a long time. Where this? Where this lady? Where is she? This is not showing up anywhere. So finally, they're gonna put it to say an statement, and they cut it. Or channels. So I, I saw that after the president stopped talking, they kind of they they dipped out. Well, um, good luck with the good luck with the music playing. Sounds like you're gonna have to get real creative. Oh yeah. So basically, um, you know, I'm a music teacher, but I'm also uh, I do a lot of weddings. So yeah, I play around. So I do. do you, a lot do you of... sing or you play instruments? What do you do? Uh, mostly instrumental. My instrument is a classic guitar. So. So I studied in the Conservatory of Music of, of, from Puerto Rico, but I'm here since 1999. So wow, you played at the conservatory. Yeah. So my mother lives in Juana Diaz, you know, close to Ponce. Yes, Ponce. Uh, my sister lives in Yauco. Yauco. So that was pretty painful for Maria and then the, the earthquake. Always something. And now this is unthinkable. What's going on right now is, wow, I never thought something like this is going to happen to us, you know? Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. We all feel that way. Well, I thank you for, uh, somebody's asking if you play the, if you play the cuatro. Yeah, I play the cuatro too. Yeah. You do, you do. Well, so other people are asking you to perform, but I'm sure you're not in a position to be able to. <laughs> Maybe the next time. The next time. <laughs> Have a wonderful night. Thank you. Nice all right. to see you. Bye -bye. I love when people start telling me where they're from on the island because I joke and I tell my colleagues, my CBS News colleagues, that I can name more municipalities than them because I think the municipality names are so unique. So I love when I get to practice the names of the municipal. Like we literally have been in Puerto Rico working and we'll be driving back and we'll compete as to who can name more municipalities without, you know, looking at their phone or something. All right, here we go. I, I don't know why I'm holding this glove. I, I don't know. I have gloves all over the house. This is not a used one. <laughs> I think I was putting them in my coats because I was, as I would take Paddington out, I'd use one glove and, and I'd throw it away. And I, so I just stuffed a bunch in my pocket so that I would have it. All right, so it says, uh, by the way, whoever wrote hashtag don't push the button, bingo, that's the hashtag, remember? Hi, David. Well, hello, aren't those some cool glasses? What is your name? My name is Maria. Al Shar and I'm in New York City. Okay, tell us your new normal. My new normal is surviving. Yeah. This yeah. is crazy. New York, a few blocks away, we have corpse freezing in trucks, numbers going high, thanks to our bright president. Who decided that everything was cool until last minute? Luckily, we have Governor Cuomo, who has done a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful job. He's inspirational. He's down to earth. Things are so crazy. Jordanian husband, Dominican born, nine-year-old in the house. 90 year old in college who is still living in the dorms because he doesn't want to bring any germs or virus or anything here. It's it's crazy. It's crazy. New York City, it's reduced spaces. You live in a two by two shoe box. And it's crazy. I will I will say these are first world problems, but for our friends who live elsewhere in the country. You know, it's one thing to be locked in your house when you have a backyard and a front yard and a side yard and a whatever yard. It's another thing to be locked in a one bedroom apartment. David, David, 10 a.m. I decide I need to take fresh air. I walk into a small balcony we have, which leads to the backyards for everyone. Just like I can reach like I can have like 
access to six backyards, the two houses across the street, I mean, in the next block, oh my God, all the cursing, all the yelling, all the screaming I heard, that was crazy. I said, you know what? I feel good. That was therapy for me because we're not that bad in my house anymore. <laughs> you know, they were like about to kill each other and screaming at the kids and calling names. And I said, this is insane. This is insane. My nine-year-old, I tell him, from 8 a.m. to 2.30, you're in school. We're not on vacation. So you have to sit at the table with your laptop and find work to do. The teachers, they're improvising. They don't know exactly what they're doing or how to do it. They're doing their best. I agree. But he has too much free time, and I don't want him playing because by the time he goes back to school, it's going to be September. It's not going to be any, you know, it's not going to be before that. It's going to be September. And I don't want my nine-year-old to realize that, oh, yeah, I'm going to be doing homework from my bed or the couch. No, you have to have some discipline. And this is so hard because I get to be a mom, a work at from home person, and a freaking teacher because whatever he doesn't understand, ma, 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 every two minutes. I'm about to pull my hair one by one. This is crazy. Not to mention that whenever we need to go for, out for supplies, I look at my doorknob. And I think hell is out that out there. I don't even want to look at the door. It's like, I don't want to go out because if I go out, I may get infected from the air, from the supermarket, from walking, from stepping, from... It's crazy. And guess what? I don't want delivery either because the cardboard, the freaking virus lasts whatever many hours. I'm not going to show you because it's a mess. And if I show you, you're going to think, oh, how do they live? My boxes have to stay in quarantine for at least five days before I touch them and open them. It's ridiculous. Why? Because I could not get enough Lysol or alcohol or cloths or anything to spray because New York is crazy. Shelves went out empty weeks, like last week, two weeks ago. You cannot find soap bars. You cannot <laughs> find liquid soap. You cannot find... Any wipes, never in my life would I have ever thought of having to wash freaking bread, sandwich bread, and, and hot dog bread, and whatever bread bags you have. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm washing my hands before I wash the freaking dishes. Don't laugh. This is crazy. I'm going insane. And guess what? I'm laughing. I'm laughing because it's so true and it's so real. It's horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. What we're leaving? Never in my life. Never in my life. I'm a cancer patient. My appointments have been canceled. The other day, two days ago, I called the hospital. Chest pain, chest pain. They're calling me. Are you having a heart attack? It was a freaking panic attack. I'm not watching the news anymore. I don't want to see numbers. I don't want to see numbers. It's driving us crazy, insane. Not anymore. I don't even know how we're going to be leaving. I don't know how we're going to survive. I hear the door opening in my building. How can you have guests in this time? We're supposed to be quarantined. My husband, oh my God. This is a good story. <laughs> Are you are you up to this or do you need to oh, move on? Keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, so I married my college sweetheart thirty some years later, third time around. A month after, I realized I was diagnosed with cancer. He stuck in whatever. Long story short, we married two years ago. Last year, he moved in. We're getting papers. Now he's ready to get work. Guess what? Job interviews coming up. It's Corona time. Savings gone. Interviews nowhere to be found. 
our economy what's gonna happen I'm being hopeful thinking that everyone's going to be so messed up that someone's going to have to do something about it because it's not going to be one or two of us that are going to be messed up with the economy. It's everyone. New York City, it's it's dead. It's tell, me about, tell me about your cancer journey. Are you, are you dealing with it now? It's interesting. Oh, my God. It's been up, down, left, right. I'm good. I've had support. I have the best doctors in the world. And look at me. You have hair. I have exactly. It's beautiful. It's it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I, I, I like that stop, color. I had to stop dyeing. Yeah. So no more hair color. It used to be black, black, very black. But I'm here. And uh just last week, I had to go back to the hospital for some new thingies that showed up, and I had my sonogram. And we're just waiting to see what's going to happen, because guess what? It's corona time. Last time I went to the hospital, which was last Tuesday, I had my appointment. As soon as I walked in, I had a thermometer up my forehead within distance. Have you been? Have you traveled? No, 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 no. Are you coughing? No, no, no. Temperature? No, 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 no. It's crazy. My husband and child had to wait in the car because they were not allowed to the hospital anymore. Right, right. It's, yeah. it's really crazy. I mean, yeah. New York, it's really crazy. Can I ask you something? Everything. Do you, feel, do you feel better having gotten some of this off your chest for all of us? Yes, and you know why? Why? Because I know I'm not the only one going crazy, and I know a lot of people think that by venting this out, they will feel they're not such great persons or strong, and we're just human. That's exactly we're right. You are all of us to a degree. Everybody, you, so you listed 20 things here. Not everybody <laughs> may check all 20 boxes, but they might check seven or 12 some people go check all 20 and they're going to see themselves in you except without the cool red glasses. Uh, 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 uh. And guess what? I've left out. Uh oh. There's no freaking alcohol delivery. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> well, I, I, I will tell you that I went to the store to get some lunch today, just like literally right outside my building. And there's a wine store around the corner. There were so many people going in that wine store. And all I could think to myself was, I don't want alcohol to suppress my immune system. No, thank you. Uh-uh. I don't, I, don't, I don't need any alcohol right now. Nope. You know what? You do. <laughs> hot sake. You're supposed to take hot drinks. It's supposed to be hot because hot kills the coronavirus. Warm up some sake. Have a little glass. Let it go down. You know what? <laughs> This is insane. And I'm guessing you don't need any alcohol because you're on your own in your house and you have space. I live in a shoebox with a nine-year-old and a 50. How old is my husband? 52. How old is he? Look at him. Look at him. That's my nine-year-old. Come, Nico. Say hello. Hello. Hi. How you doing? How what's you your, doing? What's your asking, name? Hi. What's your name? He's asking. I'm known. You don't have a name? Rogelio. Rogelio. Rogelio is talking to his friends on the PS4, whatever thing. I don't even know how that works. He's happy. He well, saw me cry about six times today. He freaked out. You know what he did? On his cell phone, he will be sending me messages through WhatsApp. Please don't cry. It's all going to be good. I'm sitting next to him. He's not talking to me. He's Aww. WhatsApping me. And I'm like... Yes, we are. I'm just very emotional. We're going to be good. And I'm just happy I'm not any of my neighbors. When I walked out into that balcony and I heard them yell and scream to the children, I'm like, I'm saying, you know, my situation is not so bad, but it's crazy. It's crazy. The stress we're all going through. My husband, you know why I have not poisoned him? Because I will have to be living with that corpse for the next God knows how many weeks. Because no one's going to be able to come pick him up. Oh, my word. Oh, he my is, word. He Listen. is. 
he's Listen. going through such a hard time. And every single time he says, what do you need? I'm going out. I'm like, you're not going anywhere. You have to stay here. You have to stay home. Don't go out. Because if you go out, why am I quarantining for? You know. Yeah. No, it's fair. That's fair. Listen, you know, gonna... you know we are going to be, we're going to get through this. We're going to be okay. 911 still works. <laughs> and... I don't know about 911, but when I called that hotline for whatever, when I thought I was like dying because my chest hurt so bad, I placed four calls and I waited so long and I couldn't get through to talk to anyone. So I said, guess what? Not good. Things are hard. Everyone is giving their best. You go. You gonna make it. You gonna make it. You gonna make it. And I can tell. I can tell. This is gonna um, prevent at least another panic attack in the next twenty four hours because you got a little bit off your chest. And we were. We were more than happy to listen. You made us laugh. You made us think. You made us relate. So um, I wish you. I wish you the best. Stay safe. Thank you, love. Have a Be good sure. night. Have a good love night. Love you, everyone. You too. Bye bye. Oh my lord, what a hoot, right? What a hoot. It's good to laugh. It's good to laugh. We can relate through laughter. We can relate through pain. Um, I tell you what, that, that was, that was quite an interview. That was quite an interview. Hi. Hi, David. What is your name, sir? Uh, my name is Hector. Hi, Hector. Where are you in the world? I am in Guaynabo, Puerto Rico. Guaynabo, and you go. Okay, so we have another Guaynabo night who actually has good Wi-Fi. This is uh, great. My Wi-Fi works for now. But it okay, depends. good. So tell me about your new normal. So uh, I'm a doctor down here, and uh, um, I usually work in a private office, but I've been out. Of, I haven't worked for like a week and a half. And now I'm basically working half day, seeing five, ten patients. Are so, you doing? Are you doing telemedicine? Uh, no, I'm going to the office. Just my a lot of my patients are old and they can't really do the telemedicine. It's what a little more doctor, complicated. What kind of doctor are you? Uh, I do pain management, so I do injections and medications and stuff like that. Gosh. And uh, but most of my patients don't want to come, don't want to do the virtual uh, telemedicine. And even coordinating it, it's a hassle. So it's not that easy. But we're hanging in there. Um, there's still a lot, of, a lot of cars out during the day. But uh, we'll see. It's two weeks, two weeks down. We got two weeks more to go. We'll see how it goes. Are you originally from Puerto Rico? I am originally from Puerto Rico. I lived in New York City for about four years. Yeah. And I came back about four years ago. So I've been back here. Do you foresee yourself as getting involved in the response? Like, in other words, what I'm watching unfold in New York City right now is an all hands on deck plan. In fact, I talked to a Puerto Rican doctor who works here in New York City. He's a um, he basically performs. He does oncology um, breast breast cancer patients. Uh -huh. right? And he said, I think I'm going to get asked to help in the ER. And they're starting to actually train them to do some stuff. Do you foresee that happening I don't, down the I road? I don't think right now, since they did the quarantine pretty early, I don't think we're going to get there. Well, hopefully. Versus what's going on in New York, where they waited, every, like, the stay-at-home order that was done, like, I think maybe a couple of days ago. They waited too long with so, so many people. I mean, the numbers are going to skyrocket, especially 9 million people in such a small area, those numbers are going to go through the roof. At but least would here. You be, but would you be willing to help out if things got bad on the island? If things got bad, I would probably be willing. I mean, you got to do what you got to do. Absolutely. But the other issue is the protective equipment. I mean, there's mass shortages. Um, yep. There's uh, gowns. You know, there's a lot of stuff. You don't, you don't want to get exposed either for no reason. No, I hear you. And then I've heard stories from some of my colleagues and friends in New York City, and they don't have the proper equipment, masks. It's, it's bad. Anything else you wanted to add that I didn't ask? No, no, that's good. Uh, thank you for everything. We've been following for a long time, and I'm a big fan.
Thank you, sir. The comments are a hoot here. And there, uh, I, I think some of them have dubbed you Dr. McHotty. So you are something to that effect. So I guess the, 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 the comments, the comments on here are hilarious. <laughs> so uh, anyway, thank you for weighing in and um, all my best. Thank you for everything. Thank you, sir. Good night. Have a you guys are hilarious. You guys are hilarious. Oh, and guess what? So the button, my button died. All right, so we got time for one more. Who wants to go last? We got time for one more. Who wants to go? Leave, you you got to post in the comments section. One more before I bid you a good night. One more. Don't go. It's been a long week. It has been a long week, my friends. Where's Patty? Patty's sleeping. Paddington, where are you? Let me go see if I can get him. Who wants to go next? Last one. Last one. All right. Here we go with me, please. Me, please. Paddington is over Hello, what is your name? How are you doing? Oh my God, I've been watching you since day one from the quarantine. I live in Antioch, California. Okay. And I am 30 minutes from San Francisco. I got, I'm actually born and raised in the Mission District. I have family in my OS, um, in the island who is actually self-contained. We are Puerto Ricans here. And um, I actually work for Kaiser Permanente. Okay. Uh, so they're doing everything well. And so I, I love you so much. And I, I want to thank you for doing everything for us. And I've been watching you all week. And I told my sister, can he please accept me? Thank you. And today we... This we my love you. We love you. My sister is a cancer survivor. She's Thank actually you for responding. Oh, we're keeping her safe. Do all this. She finished her round six of chemo. Wow. So, yay. so I, I love you, David. So I just Thank want to you. say to the island of Puerto Rico and to everything and every stateside for the East Bay of California. I was born and raised in San Francisco in the mission. I'm with the mission I. And I buried my brother-in-law today, and it was really hard to be self-contained to a funeral that the state of California said you could only have X amount of family members in. And it was really hard for us today. And um, I understand that being a healthcare worker, and I abide by it, I do the six feet and everything, and, and a lot of, we're Latinos, right? And everybody wants a hug. And I'm like, no, don't hug me. I don't want to hug you. It's nothing to be sad or anything. But I get it. I love my... It's hard to have a funeral on the time right now. But I just, I just wish a lot of people would take everything in consideration, what's going on, and be self-contained. It's not who are you going to save when you're self-contained. <laughs> It's not about me. It's about people that you love, right? It's about, it is, no, but it, it, right. And so I think the beautiful thing and about. People have to realize if you're not self-contained, you're spreading from point A to point B to point exactly. C. It comes back around. Well, and I worry about your sister. I worry about people like your sister who has survived cancer, but could be exposed, <laughs> but could be exposed to this. Say hi. Oh, bless hi. your heart. Bless your heart. Listen, okay. uh, listen, I, I'm so glad we could get you guys on. I love your oh, smile. Oh, thank you. I've been sending you requests for two weeks. Well, Where's I love your- Where's your dog at? Where's your little dog? Is he sleeping? I'll get him for you. Hold on just one second. <gasps> we're doing this. We're doing this. We are doing this. Oh, my God. Should I take my head off? No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Tell him. Take my head off. There he is. Uh -huh. There he is. And this is for you. Say hi, buddy. Oh, Paddington, he was. Took, he, my sister took her head off just for you. 
Oh, you look beautiful. Let me tell you something. When my mother had cancer, she shaved her head and bald is beautiful. Yes. I love bald it. Is, bald is beautiful. Listen, if I, if I was... Every day. <laughs> well, here's the, here's the thing. I, I send you uh, lots of light, lots of well wishes. Um, and there's a whole lot of people who are watching right now. I who know. Send you the, who this send you the is same thing. From the East Bay, from Antioch, California. God love y'all. 40 miles, uh, 40, 40 minutes from San Francisco. That's wonderful. wonderful. I love you guys. Thank we're you. we're, Thank we're you. East Bay. We're out you're, here. You're we're welcome. Here. Good you night. Know, you keep my daughter-in-law safe out there in Maya West, Puerto Rico, and my son Jeff right now. He's very sick, and hopefully he's, he didn't catch it. But he's South Kentate right now in Illinois because he flies back and forth to the island. And, and today I talked to him. And he's yeah. really sick. So I just hope my son is good. Thank this you. This is the reality for me. Thank and and so to much. all the healthcare workers, I work for Kaiser Permanente. I'm going to say it. Please, everybody be safe. Please, please. It's really true stuff out there. People think it's not true. It is very true. It's very true. It's very it's true. true. Thank Listen, you, my, Thank you. My, be my best to you both. My best. I've been watching you see for a long time. Bye. God bless. God bless. Oh, wow. What a way to end the night. What oh, a way to right. end the night and say thank you. And say thank you all for watching. Thank you all for engaging. Paddington and I are off to bed. All right? Have a wonderful night.